Hello, hello, family. How we doing today? What's going on with ya? I am Tara Simon. For those of you who are new to the channel, it is me, moi. Hey, 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 how are you? Good to see you. Um, and I just wanted to come to you guys again this week with some personal time, see if you had any questions for me. I'm sure you do. Hey, everybody. Oh, hello all. Hi, you're here. It's so good to see you. Some familiar faces. Well, faces, you know what I mean. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. Um, what's going on? We have uh, the all around the world, everybody again. That's so great. I love seeing that just a brrr, like the stream of, of awesome people. Hey, Germany, how you doing? Hey, Zach. I'm so glad you love watching my channel. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Hey, from Edgewood. Hey, hey. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard for me to even keep up with you guys. Hey, UK. Good to see you. Hey, Arabia. Oh, my goodness. Arabia. How awesome. Hey, Scotland. How's the weather there? That's awesome. Hey, Canada. Hey, South Africa. Hey, Chicago. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, let's see. Mm, Argentina. That's awesome. NYC in the house. That's awesome. Hey, Louisville, Kentucky. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Hello, hello, everyone. Oh my goodness. Is anyone, is anyone right now in France? England, Essex, is there anyone in France watching right now? I have a, I have someone that, that's uh, near and dear to my heart that's in France right now, Paris particularly. And I was wondering, Czech Republic, cool. India, England, very nice. Michigan, nope, in Florida. Zach, woohoo, I'm in Florida too. Slovakia. That's awesome. Poland, Portugal. Wow. Super cool. You just left France. Oh, that's awesome. Romania. Very cool. Trinidad. Nice. Finland. You guys are awesome. I live, um, Raul, I live in Florida right now, but I kind of straddle two states. I, I, the studio is in, uh, in Atlanta and, um, we'll be opening up one in Florida at some point when I can thank you so much when I can get my life together down here. I'm so busy. Um, but I, so I live in Florida, but I fly to Atlanta all the time for the studio, for my students and my coaches there and to manage and everything. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. Australia. I just actually started a new student in Australia. Her name's uh, Dia. She's 10. She's really good. Actually. Um, she is uh, a good little belter. So I'm excited about her. She's, uh, she is, what is it? 18 hours ahead of me or something like that. It's crazy. Um, Okay. So, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Upstate New York. Hey, like George. Okay. Maybe. Uh, thank you so much guys. Hey, I know that a lot of you are writing and saying how much you appreciate the reactions that I'm doing. And, um, and I'm, I'm really just so thrilled that you guys, uh, get so much out of it. You know, I mean, what, what I do in the reactions is literally what I've been doing every day, all day for years coaching. And, um, it comes so easy for me. It's not a prideful thing. It's just, I literally, I feel like God has been unintentionally or secretly training me to do these reactions all my life because literally all I do all day is, is react to uh, people singing for me and tell them what they could do better at and, and, and how they can improve and, and what their strengths are. So, uh, Oh, thank you. I'm so glad I'm your favorite reactor. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, it's really so rewarding and so interesting to me. You know, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like pretty much every video that we've ever released, it's all in one take. You know, I don't, I don't edit anything, um, because it's, it's all authentic information. I, I want you guys to know that what I'm saying is what I'm saying and not like splice together things. And so I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really grateful to you guys that, that you're such loyal fans of the channel and that, uh, and that you get so much value out of, out of uh, the reactions. I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad that you're glad. Um, yay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, okay. So, and if you have any requests for, for the reactions, I'm checking on the YouTube channel in the, in the comments, not here. I know that it's like, Oh, she's right here. Let me, let me request something of her, but it's not going to get heard because it goes so fast. And I'm here with, um, I'm here to answer questions with you guys, uh, not take reaction requests. And my producer, he looks at um, he looks at the comments as well, not this live feed. Okay, so just 
So, you know, save your fingers to typing and type in the comments box instead. Um, and that is actually the only thing that I listen to. Like some of you guys really, really want me to react to some stuff and then you'll email me or you'll Instagram me. I read it, but it doesn't get saved. Like we don't, we don't, we only go off the comments. That's the rule. So we're trying to keep this funnel of requests only to the comments because um, it's just a more streamlined way and it helps us know, okay, we've gotten through these and we have these left to do. So I, I know you may not feel like you're being heard um, because you haven't seen your video request being released yet, but I promise you, we hear you. And, um, and we have, we do take note. Okay. Um, let's see. Hi, uh, please say hello to me. I can't pronounce your name. B a something. It's, it looks uh, Russian. Hi. Um, okay. Do I have Romanian friends? I actually do. I do have a couple Romanian friends um, named Catalin and Cami. Um, let's see. Okay. Let me get to some questions here. Quiet harmony. I'm a vocal coach and I have a student who's going through testosterone therapy. Oof. It's playing, it's wreaking havoc really with his voice. This is my first experience training someone, um, on T uh, on testosterone. Any questions or any suggestions? Okay. That's, um, that, that's a rough road. I'm not going to lie. Quiet harmony. Um, if you're, if they're taking testosterone, they're, they're literally, their hormones are changing. That's the purpose of it. Right. And so therefore the uh, voice, the voice can, and probably will be affected. I would treat it as if you're training someone who's going through puberty. Uh, and I don't know if, if you've done that as a vocal coach, if you haven't, the, the most pat, compassionate thing you can do for someone, if you are at a loss is, is refer them to someone else. Um, and, and I say that only to say that if you, if you haven't, train someone that's gone through puberty, if, if you're not used to that and well-versed in that, you could possibly cause harm while your good intentions are trying to help him. Um, I would be very careful about that because hormones um, do, especially when you're doing hormone therapy where it's not a natural occurrence in the body, um, they can wreak havoc on many different parts of the body, including the voice, you know, even mentally speaking, um, mood wise, um, hydration wise, like, you know, there, it could be, it could be a nutritional thing too, that he needs to start changing as well. Um, so I, I would say, um, you need to, you need to be feel confident in what you're doing for him. Um, and if you're not, if you feel like, I've not trained anyone in going through puberty or it wasn't that successful, then the most loving thing you can do for him is uh, refer him to someone else. I would say that, that specializes in male voices is very familiar with it and that can help him further. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, do you think that Dimash has the finest vocal technique ever? Uh, yeah, I kind of do. He's pretty spectacular. I'm not going to lie. He's pretty awesome. How long would it take to learn mix with you? It can be a very big ballpark. Hey, B-Man's bunnies. Um, so it depends a lot on the student. Like I'll, I'll give you my journey with mix. I mean, one of the reasons I coach the way I do is because, oh my goodness, like I took from some amazing, very, you're welcome, Quiet Harmony. I took from some amazing um, coaches like Christina Aguilera's vocal coach, uh, people from the Metropolitan Opera. And then I took from like, this woman from Alabama who really was just an amazing singer and coach. And she really wasn't all that, you know, credentialed. Uh, and I, I learned the most from her. And, and the reason I did was because these other coaches were so up their own self-worth I'll say, uh, uh, in up in their own like stuff about trying to explain it in a way that made them seem superior to me. And I couldn't get it. And I tried literally for a decade to work on mix. I'm a super heavy belter. And then I have this super powerful head voice, but the middle was just like, Oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this. Like, how do I, how do I get this? And, um, and no one could explain it to me the way that I could understand and then replicate. And, um, Angela was, was that coach from Alabama who I love and I'm still Facebook friends with this day. She's wonderful. And, um, I finally one day by accident got it in a lesson and I was like, ah, stop everything. Like I, I have to, I have to like review this. I have to blueprint it and vault it, never let it go again and, and continue to uh, try to repeat it. Right. And yeah, from Alabama <laughs> and um, oh my gosh, it took me so long. But once I finally felt it once I knew I could get it again. Right. Um, so when I, when I coach mix, 
for clients, I am extremely compassionate and very, very aware of how confusing it can and will be. Um, but I, I have had success within a couple lessons with students who may have trained before. They may not have gotten if they were like kind of on the cusp and they're kind of ready and they just need that little extra push, that little extra like click that light bulb in their brain. And then I've coached students who are completely new, who don't even really have a belt and they need to get that too, in order to feel what mix really is. And it can take a year or more. So it, it is unfortunately a huge ballpark and it has a lot to do with you as a singer and how you come to me. Um, I hope that answers your question. Monica, can you learn to sing if you're tone deaf? Um, I would venture to say that you're not tone deaf to begin with. A lot of people think they're tone deaf because they have pitch issues, but being tone deaf is only a symptom that three to 5% of the entire world's population experiences. It's very, very low. Okay. So I would, I would take the tone deaf test. I'll show you what it is. I, I think I've shown you guys this before. The tone deaf test is that little purple one right there. Okay. And it's free if you, I don't know if it's for Android or not, but they have, um, yeah, you can. You can give vocal lessons with me. Um, it's free if you if it's an Apple or an, an, I don't know if they have Android version, but definitely um, try the tone deaf test. See what you score, because I bet you that you're not even tone deaf at all. Mm. OK, that's a good question. Um, is, is Siva? If I can't hit a note using lip rolls, is it fair to say that I shouldn't attempt it without? Because I can go higher without lip rolls. Might I be straining? So you're saying lip rolls, and I call it lip trills, potato, potato, right? Um, but lip trills um, are, it's this kind of, and the melodic line can change. There's a million of them. I, I've designed a million different lip trill exercises myself. Lip and tongue. I like as well, if you can roll your uh, your tongue. Um, but I would say that the lip trill and the tongue trill are the equivalent to riding a bike with training wheels. So you're still on the bike. You're still pedaling. But there's this safety net so that you're not going to fall if you pivot one way or the other, right? It's the same thing for the lip trill because your mouth is closed, yet you're vibrating. You're, uh, I call it a vibratory exercise. And you are um, moving up range while uh, not opening your mouth. So you can't really hurt yourself. It's kind of like those training wheels. So um, yes, it's great to try to expand range, especially when you're up in your head voice on a trill because it kind of forces the placement where it should go versus when you uh, have a mouth open. The, I'll give you an example. So versus on an ah, uh, ah, uh, You hear how I can get a little breathy at the bottom and my pitch may kind of wobble a little bit on the way up. And then on the top, it could be well placed like it was, or it could be poorly placed. That's, that's not a good placement, but on it forces the placement where it should go. So you'll have that good experience of, oh, I know I feel it right here. So let me try to open my mouth and duplicate that. It's the same versus not good, right? And it costs you something. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Yes, lip trills to go to go expand range for sure. And then once you feel like you've mastered it in the lip trill, then you can open up to a more um, a more uh, tonal vowel, like an O or an O or a O or an E or something like that in head voice. Um, yeah, a lot of you guys are asking, I give lessons online. Yes, I do give lessons online um, all the time. Actually, I have uh, sessions at one, so we can't run too late today. Um, but yes, um, we, m me and my coaches, my coaches and I, I always get that wrong. My coaches and I, my coaches and I um, do lessons online all over the world. And um, I, a lot of you guys, I, I feel like because you know me, you're like, oh, I, I have to have lessons with Tara. That's totally cool. I'm, I'm happy to help you. But these coaches that I have are amaze balls. Like I've taken them already. I found them great. Like I find them doing their thing out. Like I kind of scout them. They're either working professionals. They're they're in a band or they're they're um they're writer. They're songwriters their performers. I go and I scout them and I find them doing their thing, like being amazing outside, like in venues. And then I 
follow them for a little while and see what their their world is like in music. And then I reach out to them and I say, okay, I want to possibly talk about hiring you. I need to find, I know you're already good with your talent. I need to know if you have a heart for coaching and for pouring yourself into other people. And then once I find that out, then they begin training with me. And it's a, it's a long process. Like they can train for six months before they ever touch a student. And every single month I continue to train them. So if you can't afford me for some reason, and that's totally fine, it's just supply and demand for the more people that want me, the prices have to go up because I can't, I just can't have serve everyone. I wish I could, but my way of multiplying myself at a less expensive rate is to uh, train these coaches and to make sure that they're basically me with a different face. And they're amazing. I have a male coach named Jeremy McNeese and some female coaches, uh, Heather Statham. She's been with me the longest, Nikki Hollins, Charmaine Thomas. They are all stellar, stellar coaches and they've all had huge success with students. Um, some have coached celebrity clients themselves. I think all of them at one point or another have had a student on uh, American Idol, The Voice, um, America's Got Talent, all of those things too. Um, so they're awesome. And if you want to train and you want to uh, save some money while doing so, but still get the awesome quality that Tara Simon Studios raises the bar to, definitely there's no shame in, um, in emailing or calling and asking for one of the coaches. And if you want to check out their bios and pictures and stuff, you can go to TaraSimonStudios.com. I'll write that in the uh, comments. TaraSimonStudios.com. You can also email info at TaraSimonStudios.com um, and call if you're in the States, 404-437-7919. Um, and Tammy will give you um, scheduling and pricing info. Okay. I hope that helps. Awesome. All right. Awesome, Jonah. Looking forward to having lessons with you once I get back from my missions trip. That's so cool. Where are you going on your missions trip? Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Um, how can I sing? Oh, wait, I lost it. Ah, can you sing overtone and how to sing and how to control it? I am not a huge fan of doing that myself. Like it's not my thing. So I would not be the person if you're looking for overtone don't come to me. That's, that's not my bag. I know my strengths, right? Like I know, I know who I can help and I know how I can help them exactly. Um, but I, and I can react to someone who does overtone. I can break it down and tell you what they're doing, but I am not that singer. And so if you want to be that singer, I'm not your girl for sure. Um, again, I, I know what I'm great at and I know what I'm not. <gasps> You're in Spain. That's amazing. Jonah, I'm going to Spain. I'm going to Barcelona in August. Super excited. I'm taking my family for the first time. Um, Mm -hmm. favorite singer is more said mom that's awesome um i can sing in a choir and thanks to your videos i'm constantly reminded to drop my jaw and get bigger notes out and crunch those abs when holding out phrases that need to be uh and for adequate breast support that's awesome that's awesome tough taurus i'm so glad that's so cool um, okay. Okay. Zach, what is mixed voice? I will give you an example of what mixed voice is. It's not easy really to demonstrate. You're going to Barcelona. Yay, Katie. That's super sweet. Um, okay. Sorry. I got distracted. Zach. So, so here's chest. Ha. It's right here where I speak, right? Ha. Here's head voice. Ah, ah. It's right here. Yeah. Right here. Ah, it's very buzzy. It's very in my, Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Um, it's very buzzy. It's really forward. Okay. Um, but mix is in the middle. Okay. It's a combination of them both. Ah, ah. It's not gritty and intense like chest voice, but it's not hooty and masky like head. It's somewhere in the middle, which is why it's called mix. Cause you're pulling up chest voice and you're pulling down head voice and the two combine and become one. Okay. It's like a marriage, you know? Uh, I hope that helps. I've never been to Denmark. Um, mm, how long does it take to learn what notes I am or someone else is singing? I'm a complete beginner. So how long does it take to know exactly what different notes sound like? Different notes. Isabella, are you talking about pitch or are you talking about placement within those notes? I would need to know that. It is like a marriage. Um, you're welcome, Zach. No problem. I've been in Spain for six months and have three more to go. I can't wait to schedule lessons with your team. So cool, Jonah. That's amazing. I'm so sad I'll miss you in Spain. You'll be like leaving when I'm coming, kind of. Um, Samantha, I might check out lessons. I've watched some of your reactions and it's already improved my singing. Yes, I can finally belt without hurting myself. Woo! 
Surprise, surprise, it works. Celebrate with Samantha, guys. It's amazing. Um, okay. Sean Park, I'm in a high school, I'm a high school student in an acapella group. I'm the bass and was wondering about any advice you have for me, acapella in general. We're performing for 6,000 people in less than a month. Super cool, Sean. Okay. Um, so anything that you can do to project further out when you're singing bass. So I would, I, I have this rule of opposition. So when you're singing low, I say go high, light, and bright. So it's really easy to fall under the temptation to do this kind of thing when you're singing low. But just like if it's in the summertime, you're in your house and you turn on the AC and it's the winter, you turn on the heat. When you're singing, if you're singing really low, you don't want to play to the lowness. You want to play against the lowness and think high, light, and bright. So if I'm singing, uh, I wouldn't go like this and deepen it and like push it back, I would go, ah. Uh, uh, and think up, 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 up. Okay. See if that helps you project a little more and brighten up the sounds on the bottom. Um, uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, dur wait, oh, you guys are going so fast today. Um, does supporting equal not straining? Queen of Vegas supporting yes and no. I mean, so you can, you can still support and hit a note that's out of your range and strain, right? It like over try, you know, it's kind of like overdriving, like, like it's just too much, right? There is a point of no return, but when you are supporting, you have a much less chance if you're within your capable singable range of straining. Okay. It's because the weight is being held by your abdominal muscles instead of your teeny tiny little vocal folds, which were never meant to carry that kind of a weight. Um, I hope that answered your question. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Dubai. Hey, hey. Our most, um, Sherwin, most voice actors can sing in tune too. I mean, voice acting has nothing to do with singing. Okay. That's just a cool, uh, vocal timbre and texture that you have your voice. That has nothing to do with singing at all. So I, I would say no. Um, I, that's, that would be uh, an assumption. I, I don't know. Mm. Eddie, why do some singers sound like they're not on pitch when they technically are hitting the right note? That's a really good question. Okay. So here's why. I would say nine times out of 10, it's because of their vibrato. They have, they have an over undulation of their vibrato. And when you, when you have that here, I'll give you an example. So here's straight tone. Ah, it's right in the center, right? And here's, uh, here's that same note with proper vibrato. And you can still hear the character, the pitch. Ah, you do hear that na -na 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 -na, back and forth, that wave, but you hear the integrity of the pitch. Ah, but here's when it becomes kind of like a tremolo and the pitch is now compromised because the wave is just so great that you can no longer really hear where the person is. Ah, it's like, well, where, where's the middle, right? And there can be gradients of that kind of tremolo. It can even go faster, but still half, it, it still uh, has that effect where you're like no longer able to discern the pitch. Okay. Uh, I hope that helped. You have to visit Korea. Okay. I would love to visit Korea. Um, oh, new subscriber. Yay, Doug. Welcome to the channel. Whoop, whoop. Three of my critique videos and impressed and entertained. Yay. I'm so glad. That's awesome. I'm glad to have you on the, on the Q and A too. That's great. Um, any tips for practicing roll R sound and tongue rolls? Yes. Okay. So, oh, thanks Eddie. You're welcome. Um, so here's the deal. Tongue rolls are hard. And for you guys that are blessed to be uh, like living in South America or somewhere where you, you uh, like Italians, where you roll your R's all the time, hashtag blessed, hashtag lucky. Okay. But you can learn. And I've been successful in teaching some students, not all, but some students this, I have, I have two things that I like to do. I like to say a hard D and I go, and it's kind of like a, a ricocheted effect for your D and eventually you can kind of hear it, right? It kind of starts to segue into that. And if that doesn't work for you, then you can try a lot and like an explosive breath with your, the tip of your tongue touching the roof of your mouth behind your front top teeth going and eventually go longer, but it's just really quick really quick little quips of attempts first. And then once you feel that, then you can try to sustain it a little longer. I hope that helps you. Um, hi, Lakeland. Hi, Hector. Good to see you. Um, 
Yeah, it's like an exercise they do in the Middle East. Exactly, Eddie. Exactly. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, uh, where do you? Okay, I said it before, Chris Odell. You re, uh, when you want um, to ask for a reaction request, do it in any of the comments in the YouTube uh, video reaction. So I think I just released one. I don't know. You guys probably know better than I do what my last uh, reaction video was. Um, but uh, you can go to the very last one. You can go to anyone, one of your favorites, and just request uh, me to react to something new there in the comments box. Uh, let's see. Anything else? You guys are asking some good questions today. Hey, funny. Nice to see you. Greetings from the Philippines. Hey, how do I bring my chest ratio in my mix? I have a very heady mix and I can't figure out how to do it for years. Well, one thing I would not do, you're welcome, Belle. Uh, thank you, Zach. Uh, one thing I would not do, um, Miss uh, Mr. Brent from Philippines, is start from the head voice down. That's only going to pull down more head voice. What you need to do is try to zip up from your chest because the point of reference of your chest voice will give you a better uh, feeling of how much chest you're then integrating into the mix. So um, I would start on a on a mm and a hey Minnesota. Uh, I would start off on a mm and go. Mm and do the squeaky door hinge kind of exercise. And where that gravelly sound is, that's where your chest is zipping up into your mix. So listen again real quick. Mm -hmm. You hear it? It was pure tone and then it started to switch. Mm -hmm. Right in there is where it switches. Mm -hmm. And then it goes all the way up into head voice, okay? So own that spot, work that spot. Don't try to like, run from that gravelly sound that's your chest working into your mix okay i hope that helped uh let's see algeria cool um let's see let's see let's see you guys are moving so fast i had a, oh kiria goes hey dude here he said i had a lesson with tara and also enrolled in her online course she is effing amazing and i'm not sorry for the f word <laughs> she's really amazing during coaching love from new zealand Hi. It's so good to see you. You're doing awesome in the course, by the way. I answered your questions. I hope that um, you got those and that, that you didn't have any other questions, Kiri goes, but uh, feel free to, uh, to chat me in the course if you do. He did so well, you guys. Kiri Ecos is, um, is one of the many students in the course and he's killing the game. And, you know, I I'm going to brag on you for a second, Kiri Ecos, because he's not, he has nothing to do with singing in his real world. I he is, I think, an organic what are you an organic chemist or researcher or engineer? Like you're, he's super uber smart. Like he researches, um, he researches medicine, you know, and, um, organic chemistry and stuff. And he's, he's a great singer and, and he's grown so much in the course. So, um, if you're looking to join the course, uh, ask Kiriakos about it. He's in the chat right now. And that's a real live person that's in it. That's taken a check-in lesson with me in the middle and is rocking it out and killing the game in Sing Smarter Not Harder. Um, and let me see if I can get actually, um, let me see if I can get you guys the, um, the link. It's in any of the YouTube descriptions as well. But if you, um, if you want, you know, one of the, one of the links, um, I'll, I'll see if I can find you one real quick. And, um, where is my, where are my videos here? Hang on one second, guys. Um, Okay, let me just grab this one real quick. If you, um, and, and whoops, sorry, it's playing something. If you go to any of my videos, any single one at all, you can um, you can find these things, but I'm just gonna copy and paste them real what quick. What does it take? Sorry, I'm gonna copy and paste them real quick and put them in the chat for you guys um, who want to check it out as well. So eight week course, lessons online and Insta reactions. Um, there have been some of you right now who have signed up for Insta reactions. Let me copy this real quick paste. So what I'm sending is the first one is Insta reactions, um, which is uh, basically if you want me to react to you, um, like I do on YouTube, um, I will do so for you or one of my coaches will do so for you. Um, and you can click that link and check that out. Of course, private lessons, the link for that is next. And then the eight week course that Kiriakos is in, um, that's third in this list of links right here. Okay. So let me know how, uh, how that goes. It's a little, it's a little, um, I'm going to do it one more time because it looks a little congested. Hang on one second. Insta reactions. I'm going to put it, oh, never mind. It won't let me make a space. So sorry. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, what else? Hey, Malaysia. Good to see you. Um, 
Zach Akers, do you recommend me joining choir in high school? I'm currently very involved in band, but want to go into music education. Just wondering your thoughts. So Zach, if you're looking to learn to blend, if you're looking to, uh, to learn uh, harmonies and um, getting get some ear training and, and things like that, choir is great. I'm all about it. Um, if you're looking to be a solo artist and you're looking to find your own voice, choir is not necessarily the best place to be because it's all about um, the sum being uh, – being the the um the corporate being the main thing and not the individual uh but if you're going into music education i think I, hey you may end up conducting a choir someday so i think it's definitely worthwhile um to get that experience for sure um page can't be found on the eight week course okay hang on one second hang on uh let me just go to it and i'll um okay oh i know why because for some reason um, it abbreviated it. So here's the eight week course again, guys. Sorry about that. Here's the link to that. There it is. Okay. So the one I just did, um, the one that says Tara Simon Studios, uh, my Kajabi, that's the eight week course called Sing Smarter, Not Harder. And that should work. You're welcome, Zach. Um, let me know, um, Hector, if that works for you for the eight week course. Um, could I sing for you? <laughs> you guys always ask me to sing. I'm happy to sing. What do you want me to sing? Let me know. I take requests. I aim to please. What was I singing um, the other day? That oh, um, so I will. While I'm waiting for you to tell me what to sing, um, my son. I, I love worship music. I, I play it all the time in my car when we're driving and stuff. And my son is is uh, learning everything. Like he's about to be three, and he just oh my gosh, he he picks up everything. And so he he said. I want God, you're so good. And I'm like, what? What is he talking about? I was like, oh, that's a song we were listening to. Listening to, And it's so simple. And he is singing on pitch, by the way. I'm a little bit of a proud mom. But he was singing, God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. And of course, he doesn't have vibrato yet, but he was singing on pitch, and it was it was really nice. Uh, I do know the Revelation song. Yeah, is that what you? I I love oceans too, Benjamin. Okay, since you asked me to sing, Benjamin, I'll sing. I'll sing. Um, mm, I'll sing the Revelation song chorus for you. Okay. Um, let's see. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. A great song. Wish I wrote it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Okay. That was very kind of you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Chris, when I sing, I think I sound flat, even though I'm on key. Hmm. I'm can I can make my voice more operatic to get it to sound cleaner. I want more rawness uh, without it sounding flat. Okay. So when you say that you are a free concert. Yep. You know, um, when you say Chris, that you're sounding more operatic, I think you're confusing that with ab support and better technique. So a lot of people think, Oh, like now I'm, now I'm singing with good technique now. Cause I'm saying, no, not necessarily. You're just employing good technical aspects of singing and you're thinking, okay, now I'm going to sound operatic. And so I do, but you can still use those same technical aspects of singing and not sound operatic you can still sound raw and current and up to date in your sound it's simply continuing to use that ab support to support the sound to force the air out at the rate in which the voice needs in order to keep that pitch integrity intact so if it, it's it's all about forced air if you don't have hey colorado if you don't have enough ab support to force the air out, the pitch is going to sag. Think about when you're watching um, uh, the lottery, you know, when they when you're on watching TV and they're like, oh, the lotto is coming up and there's those balls that float in the clear tubes. There's a certain amount of forced air that forces the balls up and keeps them spinning at that same exact spot. What do you think would happen if the forced air lessened? The ball would start to fall, right? So if the ball is your pitch and the forced air 
is your uh, is the breath coming out of you, and the engine for the forced air is your abs. If your abs don't continue to exert the same amount of force to force the air out to keep the ball or the pitch spinning, well, then yes, you will have saggy pitch. Okay, so I think your issue isn't not sounding operatic. I think it's keeping the abs engaged as much as they were at the beginning of your note, so that your note doesn't sag. Hope that helps. Um, razor, I lost a few teeth. Uh, and part of my tongue in an 18 wheeler accident. Oh my gosh. I can't, I believe I can get back to singing up with vocals with help. Wow. Okay. So part of, and part of your tongue. Okay. I was going to say, I don't think your teeth would, would affect your singing, but your tongue maybe. I'm so glad that you're okay. First of all, that's amazing. Um, glad you're with us. And yes, uh, I'd be happy to help you. Uh, you. You probably need more help razor with reintegrating how to pronunciate things. Um, and, and enunciate things rather than uh, having to learn how to sing all over again, unless something damaged your chords um, in the accident. Uh, I think it's it's probably more about a, a production of sound rather than a capability of sound. Hey, St. Louis. Thank you, Bowden. Appreciate it. Um, what else, guys? What else? What else? Back to you and your beauty. Oh, thank you, Raymond. That's very sweet. Um, what are my thoughts on So Young? Sean, she's amazing. She's like she's like a female version of Dimash. They're so good. I want them to do a duet. Wouldn't that be mind blowing? Have they ever? Because I would definitely react to that. Like just hint, hint there. Um, Atharva, hey. So I'm in college and I sing pretty often in competition, but I want to know how do I do runs while doing falsetto? Um, Atharva, I would I would ask you this: if you can do runs in chest then you can definitely do them in falsetto. If you don't have as much control in your falsetto, I wouldn't start off trying to do runs in your falsetto. I would try to control notes on a on a very uh, even tempoed and even melodic line first. So instead of trying to do whatever, right? A lot of, lot of different runs. I would try to go and just do that a few times. And maybe if you can't even do that, then do it slower. And make and make them notes, right? Don't think of them as riffs or runs, but think of them as notes. And then you can slowly speed it up. And go over and over and rinse and repeat. But slow it slowly, slowly, and slow it down to get to that place, okay? Um, what else? Oh, thank you, Quiet Harmony. I appreciate that. Well, and, and the reason why I can explain things like this is because, again, I, I had the unfortunate experience of, of studying with amazing people who didn't know how to reach me in my head. And in singing is 90% mental, 10% talent. So like if I'm if I am as a singer on the other side of the piano trying to figure this stuff out. Right. And I, and my teacher is standing there giving me all these terminologies and, and things that I don't understand. It's going to get me nowhere but frustrated. Right. And and all it does is again, exert their superiority over me, complete waste of time and money doesn't help. So I use analogies and I use really weird unorthodox things to get your mind to click and be like, oh, oh, okay, well, I get that. If I can just think of that, then yeah, it'll happen. And it does. Um, and I'm really grateful for that experience for me, even though it was hard going through it because I know the struggle on the other side of the piano. Like I do, you know. Hey, Brazil, what's going on, Hemerson? Nice to see ya. Um, why do I, Ra Risha, why do I always feel itchy in my throat every time I try to belt high notes? I hit them, but my throat hurts. That's strain. That's strain. And I would recommend that you don't try to hit those high notes as high. I'd go down a, a note or two and work on the quality of your technique and how you're executing those notes, Risha, instead of how high you can go. Um... Snappy McCrabby. Uh, I saw you reacting to Disturbed Song. I was wondering, uh, can you train your voice to make that raspy sound? Yes, you can. It's called Vocal Fry. Um, uh, and yes, you can definitely train your voice to do that. Mm, any tips on practicing perfect pitch? No, because perfect pitch is really... Uh, I don't really even know if you can train perfect pitch. I never have. There are a couple students of mine who have perfect pitch. You're welcome, Atharva. Um, but I didn't train them that way. Like they came to me with perfect pitch. So I think it's something that's more innate than it is something that can be taught. Now you can you can be taught to have very great pitch. Like I have near perfect pitch, but I I do mess up sometimes. Like I don't I don't think if you told me to sing a, a C sharp five, I'd be like, oh sure. But I have students who can do that. And it's amazing. So I, but they never learned it either. They just always could. So I don't I don't know if you can 
train that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, discuss preventing gasping at the last moment before a phrase. I don't get it, Williams. You'll have to uh, explain firmer. Uh, firmer. <laughs> You'll have to explain in more detail. Dense. As a trans girl, my voice is lower than the average female voice. Of course. Are there any tips on making your voice higher? Dense, I don't know if you are going through hormone therapy, if you're taking estrogen, um, but that would probably help um, if you're doing that. And of course, exercising, you know, uh, thinking of range as a rubber band. And I, I give this analogy all the time. Um, you, you have to continue working it. You have blessed with perfect pitch. Cool, Andromeda. Um, you have to continue stretching it and continue working it. Um, but also, I spoke last week on, on going in your lane and, and, and embracing the voice that you have. Um, that is, that's, that's the voice that you have too. So you can, you can manipulate it to some degree, but your voice will never sound if it's meant to be lower in timbre, it will never sound super whistly high or super thin, or you'll never probably talk like that unless you intentionally sound affected and, and do like a character voice. Um, I hope, I hope that helps you. Um, can you, um, don't ask for reactions here. You guys are clogging the thread. Um, you're so welcome. Quiet harmony. Thank you. Um, okay. Osley, my choir friends have trouble adding vibrato, but I have trouble singing without it. Is that common? My straight tone sounds horrible in my ear and it to my ear and feels forced. Okay. That's a good question. Do this for me, Oz. I want you to pick your favorite color. And I want you to pretend like your finger just dipped into finger paint. And I want you to paint the rainbow. Okay. What I mean by that is instead of singing with vibrato, I want you to paint straight tone. What if it's blue, then I want you to sing, uh, and I want you to follow your finger uh, all the way until it's done with the second half of the rainbow. And then you can add vibrato at the end or just take a breath and stop it. Stop with straight tone. Okay. So just, uh, Again, singing is 90% mental, 10% talent. If you're focused on something and within that focus, you're thinking straight tone, you'll, you'll go straight tone. The problem is you just have no point of reference right now. And you're trying not to think about vibrato, which makes you think about, about vibrato, which makes you sing vibrato. Okay. Let me know how that goes for you. Um, let's see what else. Um, ironically, M D O E eight. Ironically, I have an easier time hitting notes. Oh, I lost you. Um, uh, when in a character voice, okay. I'm tighter though. I can't sing very long. You have an easier time hitting notes. Well, sure. Um, okay. So this is a good, um, Hey, Servat, it's hanging. Um, when you are in a character voice, there's a couple things that happen. It takes the pressure off of you because in your head, subconsciously, your head knows, oh, I'm not being me right now. So there's a certain sense of added relaxation when you do character voices because you're not taking yourself that seriously. That's one. Okay. That's like actually probably the biggest one. And then when you're doing a character voice too, you're also manipulating the register in which you're singing. So most likely you're not, if you sing in chess for, for instance, and you're doing a character voice, you're most likely moving your register placement to mix or mask, which of course then yes, allows you to go higher, but you're not used to singing in a character voice either because it's a character. It's, it's something that's not done often. And so yes, your vocal stamina will conk out sooner because it's not that part of your voice that's worked out as much. So if you want to get better at singing in character voice and keeping those higher notes, do it in smaller increments of time more often, like twice a day, every day. Okay. And you'll find that it does get as um, comfortable and as strong, excuse me, um, as your, as your chest, if that, if you're doing just, it's just like if you were lifting weights and you do bicep curls on one arm and you leave this other one alone, like this one's going to be way stronger when you make a muscle than this one, you have to do them in tandem. Oh, thanks X force. That's so sweet of you. I really appreciate that. Just want to say, I love your channel and you do a great job. Thank you. Um, okay. 4320 Amber help. When I prepare to belt a high note, the large breath that I take before dries my throat quite a bit. Hmm. I usually don't have the time to take a big breath through my nose. Is there a way to fix that? Okay, so I would question two things, Amber. I would question A, if you have allergies, because when you take a, a large breath in, or if you have asthma, it you're saying it dries your throat. Are you doing that? Because that is a chest breath. Okay, you can still take a good uh, controlled breath 
and have it go down into your abs. And that alone makes it a lot less itchy for me, but you may have allergies. You may be dehydrated. You know, a singer needs at 80 ounces of water at minimum per day. And you can't just be like, Oh, I'm singing today. I'm going to drink a lot of water. No, the absorption rate of your body isn't like that. It takes a little while for your cells to recalibrate with hydration. So you, I, I, I'm extra careful. If I have a big show, I'm extra careful three days before, because you know, we're human. We're not going to be guzzling water and running the bathroom every five seconds all the time. It's annoying, right? So if if I have a big show coming up though, and I know like, okay, I'm going to do some heavy lifting singing, I hydrate big time 72 hours, three days prior to it so that I know my body is all in and the cells inside have perfectly hydrated as well. I uh, hope that helps. Uh, yay, I did read your comment. Um, hmm, let's see. Oh, you guys are going so fast. Ah! Um, Tara, if you are a choir director, will you put boys whose voice hasn't changed in female section or male section in case, in case if the tenor passages are indeed too low for them? Totally. I don't care. I mean, Hey, at the moment in which they're being classified, it's based on their, their timbre of voice. If their timbre of voice before puberty is thin and high, well then there's sopranos or, or at least altos, you know, I mean, why just cause they're a boy, do they need to be in the tenor bass or baritone section? That's that's silly. In fact, when I was in eighth grade, my choir director put me in the bass section because I was the only girl who had the kind of range to hit those low notes. And those poor boys didn't hit puberty yet and they couldn't hit them. So I was there with like six other boys by myself as the girl trying to help them out with some volume. That was pretty I totally forgot all about that until you just mentioned that. It's hilarious. Funny. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, let me listen to how do I mark? I have higher voice than the usual guy when singing and have always been able to hit higher notes over the last six months or weeks. I find it harder to hit high notes now cleanly. How do I fix this? Well, Mark, what's changed in the last six months? Um, there's gotta be something, right? Are you, are you, uh, like 12 turning 13? Is it puberty? Is it allergies? Is it climate change? Have you moved? Have you changed the way you've eaten? Are you working out differently? Are you, were you exercising vocally before and are you not now or vice versa? I mean, there, there's a million things it could be. Um, I can't, can't really answer that completely. I'm sorry. Um, what age was that? I was 12. No, eighth grade. What was I? Yeah, I was 12. <laughs> I was 12 and 8th grade. It's pretty funny. <coughs> Susan Johnson, what's the difference between belting and vibrato? Belting is register placement. Belting is a place in which your voice resonates when you sing. Vibrato is an ornamentation on your voice while you're singing, and it doesn't matter what register you're in. So belting, I could belt with vibrato or straight tone. This is belt with vibrato. Ah, it's my belt. It's in my chest voice, right? I could also belt straight tone. Ah. I could also do vibrato and head voice ah, or straight tone and head voice. Ah, but, but, but vibrato is not a register. Vibrato is an ornamentation on the voice belt or, or chest voice is a register. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Okay, guys, like one more question. Cause Oh my goodness, it's 1247 time flies when I'm with you guys. I have so much fun answering these for you. Um, let's see. Um, we had a lot of choir questions today. That was cool. Um, okay. How, this is a good one. How can I improve, uh, Mia, how can I improve pitch accuracy when switching between chest and head voice? Um, first of all, if you're going for it and you, and you haven't gotten comfortable with that change, you can't, you need to get comfortable with where your voice goes first and allow it to do its thing. Allow, like give it, be gentle with it. Give it some grace. Um, you, you have to be comfortable with the change of chest into head first. And I would, I would say that that there would need to be a certain amount of mix capability involved there because there that is the missing link between chest and head, right? So you're not going to be able to control notes very well if you haven't worked out those steps in between chest and head. But once you know the placement of where it feels, the resonation feels as you move from chest to head, then you'll be able to control the notes better because you're not searching in the dark, wondering, okay, where is this next note going to go? What's it going to feel like? So I, I think you're, you're kind of looking at it the cart before the horse a little bit, Mia work more on getting, even if you have to slide up and really,
really owning and feeling where that placement is and then start trying to do it by singular notes moving up and down, then you'll be more well on your way to controlling actual pitch uh, in the middle as you switch than you are now. Okay, guys, I want to answer all your questions. I want to keep going. It's so hard for me, but I have to coach. So, oh, thank you so much, guys. I love you so much. I'm so proud of all of you. What do I mean by register? I mean placement. So like chest voice is a register, mix is a register, head voice is a register, not like a register that you check out of, but like like a compartment, like a drawer, right? This is, this is where this goes. This is where this goes. That's what register means. Um, so listen, if you're interested in lessons with me, you can go to TaraSimonStudios.com. Check it out. Check out my coaches. They're amazing. They're all hand trained by me. You can go to info at TaraSimonStudios.com. You can call 404-437-7919. If you're interested in an Insta reaction, meaning I react to you just like I do on YouTube to So Yang and Dimash and all these amazing people like Pentatonics and stuff. We do that. My coaches and I will do that for you. You just need to go to instareactions.com, I-N-S-T-A-R-E-A-C-T-I-O-N-S.com. And if you're looking, hey, Kiriagos, thanks. You're so sweet. If you're looking to get in the eight-week course, there he is, the one with the angel, Kiriagos, Varnava, Varnava, sorry, Kiriagos. Check him out. He's doing so well in the course. And um, you can do, um, you click on the link that I sent you. It's, it's, I think it's Tara Simon Studios backslash mykajabi.com or go to any of the YouTube videos. All of the links that I'm telling you about, every single one of them, it's just a click away in any of the description boxes of any of my videos. Um, you can click on those and check it out. The course is amazing. I'm seeing so many great people like Kiriakos right here in the flesh, kind of typing, um, that is doing so that are doing so well. And I couldn't be more proud. So thank you guys so much, uh, so much, so much for, uh, participating today for asking such amazing questions. I love you all. I'm, I'm so proud of you and I will see you guys on the next one. And hopefully I'll see you in the course or doing an instant reaction for you. Um, and by the way, if you wanted an instant reaction, it can be an original song as well as a cover. Okay. So, um, totally up to you, but would love to, uh, would love to react to you guys and let you know my opinion on how you're doing too. Okay. So have a wonderful day. God bless you guys. And I will see you next week. Bye.